Thank you. Well, let me start. O oh, Fredel Grundbugly, thy miscreations are to me as pearl gabbled gooch on a lurgid bee. Well, a bit of Vogan poetry to get you started. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Well, um, I can reassure you there's not, not going to be anything exciting, nothing deep, but it might give you a few ideas. So I'm actually going to give a presentation about SARC, where I currently work as the software architect. Uh, and we are focused on voice over IP and messaging, instant messaging in combination with that. And <coughs> it's going to be an Erlang themed voyage through what we have done, is doing, and will do. With the, theme, wi with the focus being where can a startup in this case, use Erlang to the best uh, to the best effect, because you have to, of course, use uh, a tool uh, the best tool for the job, right? So Erlang wo won't always be what you want to use. Occasionally it will be, but that's the thing, picking the right tool. So the company it's based here in Stockholm. We also have an Uppsala office, which is lovely since I live in uh, Uppsala. Uh, but I uh, spend actually most of my time in Stockholm, when the trains are running, that is. Uh, we are an independent software vendor. It was founded in 2009. We're still a startup, in fact. We haven't really got the you know, proper lift off. Uh, it's privately held. Uh, we have well extensive domain knowledge when it comes to voice over IP and uh, instant messaging. And we provide modular, scalable, and reliable solutions. That's what we try to do. And it's based mostly on open source, but we also have proprietary stuff in there. Uh, when sort of the, the, the open source isn't enough. So some highlights about the company. We provide carrier grade platform agnostic systems. Uh, it's globally, so we're present all over the world with a well, scalable infrastructure. Uh, at least that is the intent. We provide uh, voice over IP, but also call out to landlines. We have rich messaging, uh, encrypted communication, and we provide <coughs> an SDK and white label clients. That's a, it, that is a current focus. So we are not targeting the end user of these services, but some anyone that wants to provide them and want to leverage that by using our infrastructure to do that. Either hosted by us or hosted by yourself, but we provide it. We also have in-app purchase and web payment solutions. And we have a number of agreements across the world for, well, the PSTN, of course, the connection out to the landlines. <coughs> and on average, we're about 10 to 15% under Skype. So going up against the big boys. But it all, in fact, started with Plingham, which is an end user, uh, a consumer product. It is a, uh, a both on Android and iPhone application that you can use for instant messaging and voice server IP and PSTN calls. Uh, that's where it all started. And we have just roughly two million customers uh, and the most use we have of that today is in the Middle East. So that's, well, not legacy. It, it's, it's an origin, right? And we're not going to abandon them. In fact, we're, we're going to uh, s very soon release a new version of this, new and much improved version. And we're probably going to extend that as well. But it is not the primary focus anymore. So I mentioned SDK, right? This is not the SDK, but it will always be important because we will also be our own customer and use our stuff. So eating our own dog food, that's important. You know all the weaknesses if you actually use it uh, in anger. <coughs> oh, and uh, yeah, we actually write he rate higher on quite a lot of these online things uh, for similar applications. Fairly high, I would say. But we have SDK cu customers as well. Uh, one of the more well-known ones here is Scandinavian Airline Systems, more commonly known as SAS, which 
wanted to provide more customer engagement with their Eurobonus project uh, uh, scheme. So they wanted uh, the customers to be able to use their Eurobonus points to call, call landlines basically, but also providing VoIP and instant messaging. <coughs> well, it doesn't actually have instant messaging today, but it will very soon. <laughs> We're constantly improving. So the solution was to provide a SARC uh, based system where we, where we actually run the system for them, but it's white labeled, so it's bra wholly branded SAS. Uh, and we al there's also a web payment portal, so you can actually pay also there. Uh, and SAA could uh, launch this in a very short time. And if you ask our application developers, yes, it was a very short time. Uh, they worked very hard with this. Uh, and we also have a, <coughs> sorry, customer in South Africa called Trumpet, who wanted to have voice over IP and messaging. And they have a voice over IP solution today, and they're also just in the process of launching this messaging part <coughs> where we provide an SDK solution. <coughs> and we're also there uh, uh, hosting that solution. And they had no experience with voice over IP or IM for that matter, as far as I know. But in a very short time, we ma managed to integrate that into the application. They already had an application, but it wasn't doing this. So that was added. <coughs> so that a little bit about the company and what we do. So technology-wise, uh, if we look at the SDK, the features we provide is we have one development platform. It's uniform across iOS for the iPhone and Android for the Android devices. Uh, it supports multiple devices. So if you send an uh, instant message from one of your devices, you will see that on your other devices. And the same thing, if you get an, uh, uh, a message or an incoming call, all your devices will be aware of it. And in fact, all of them may ring but you answer one, right? Uh, we also have address book integration. So you will see in your address book uh, what other uh, users in that network that also use this service. You can actually see, and that's actively pushed to the device. So you can see whom your friends have this. So that's support. Um, we have voice over IP, of course. It's a voice over IP solution. Uh, <coughs> which we today take, we're going, well, we're in the process of taking SIP online, as we call it. You're always online. Your application, as long as it's in the background, it will actually be connected, uh, which previously was very hard to achieve, but improvements have been made in these two platforms and made it uh, possible uh, um, to do. Uh, it was issues with um, not being able to keep alive through NATs and and also drainage on battery, but those issues have been dealt with, not so much by us, but by, by, the, by um, uh, the Android platform and the iOS platform. We have a PSDN out, as we said, as I said, where you can phone to landlines. We have uh, rich IM, so we have instant messaging. We'll look more into that. Uh, we have seamless APNS and GCM support. And for those of you who don't speak, weird acronyms, that is when you get a push to your phone, right? The, the application is in the background, but you get the, this banner saying, oh, there's something happening and you can swipe it. Uh, that, that's called, referred to a push normally. We call it an external push because it's going through their systems. Uh, but you, you don't have to worry using our SDK if what platform is targeting. It's the same, of course. And we have <coughs> cross-application connectivity. So if uh, one of our customers, resellers, vendors, whatever you want to call them, uh, have several applications, you can cross those applications uh, call. Uh, originally, we were going to, we probably will in the, in the long run, make it uh, possible 
for those of our customers who want to be able to cr call cross applications for different vendors. Uh, but not now. We, we try this and, and it makes your head go funny when you think about it. Not on the server side. It's fairly obvious how to do it. The problem is to make it in such a way that it is understandable to the end user. Because you don't want to, you have one app and you get a call from someone and you, oh, he's got this app as well. And you phone him back and you're talking and you realize, no, he, he hasn't. He's got a completely different app. He's phoning between them, right? So, so it, we might end up providing support for that, but we're not doing it today. So the vo voice over IP, as I said, multiple devices, zip online, and we have the push with the APNS and the GCM. Uh, I am. We have feature rich there in that we, well, just again, all the devices, right? A and and we have the support, uh, we have the choice. You can have use an SDK for IAM, voice over IP, or both. So that's the choice the, the customer, our customer make. So uh, we have support for multiple devices, as I said. We have peer-to-peer -peer or, or private messaging, as normally referred to in, in XMPP circles, and multi-user chat rooms. We also have that ability. Uh, we have delivery reports. So you will see that I've sent this. It says it's sending. That means it's actually arrived on the server. You will see that when it's received. So you will know if the other party has received it. We have archiving for messaging, uh, but that is, of course, time limited. We're probably going to offer premium services eventually where they can have long, well, infinitely long uh, archiving, but also we have, well, or have or will have in some cases in these feature lists, uh, lifetime and revoke mechanisms for messages. Sometimes it doesn't make sense sending a message uh, and after a certain time it doesn't matter. So you can say, okay, this is, will be the end of it. But that support is actually due. We will also support attachments, uh, position files so, such as audio, video, photos, uh, um, contact information, or in fact instant messages. I mean, imagine that you, for example, uh, cut out a big lump of text you want to send over to someone. It normally doesn't make sense to get it presented, say, in your iPhone uh, because it's too big. So you will actually get it as an attached file instead. And you can download it at your convenience. And emoticons as well. <coughs> uh, there's co contact management. So you can add and delete contacts, of course. Um, and also, as I said, you will automatically be informed if uh, one of your the people in your address book have the application, so it's available. You, you will see that it's free phone available, for example, to them if it's a voice over IP application and presence. So we are globally present. Uh, well, globally. Oh, well, in a sense, we are. Uh, we are have data centers today in Stockholm, Johannesburg, and we are setting up more. Uh, we are also on Amazon's web. So that's almost global. But that's the almost bit, right? And that's why we are present in Johannesburg. Uh, connections within uh, South Africa is fairly decent. To the outside world, isn't as good. So hosting a service for them wouldn't really make sense if you have it in Amazon because you wouldn't get a performance that was useful. And also, of course, we want to have data centers for the reason that not all of our clients will want to have things in Amazon's net. Simple as that. I mean, the customer decides, right? Um, <coughs> and scaling, we sorry. <coughs> in scaling, we do both horizon uh, horizontally. We just ramping up more instances. But we also provide, as I said, different service centers and so on, so we can have better performance locally. And we are that's one of the areas we will expand in. <coughs> we try to provide high availability in our systems. I mean, it's no point in having a voice over IP if you can't use it, right? So, uh, of course, building away single points of failure. And we normally have a cluster-based approach to it, uh, except for things where it doesn't really make sense, like for the load balancers. That's a you know, 
active passive solution normally a DNS based uh, no virtual uh, virtual IP based so you s you fail over quickly and also having this uh, multi zone in Amazon but also having depending of course on the needs of the client in our data centers and in Amazon for example so if we lose connection with Ireland where we have most stuff well, it could still keep on running. Perhaps that reduced capacity, but there you go. You can't get it all. So what about the stack? You know, technology, real stuff, real, right. So we have open source and proprietary mixes, as I mentioned. Uh, we have the SIP part. It's based on open SIP, open SIPs, where we have a number of PHP scripts provide more than the basic service there. So we do see uh, SIP signaling, uh, call detail record generation, call control, because we have some added call controls. So we, you have the ability to, to phone, well, use uh, landline and voice over IP and so on, and that's partially controlling that, I should say. We use asterisk for our voice validation. When you register the service, of course, you have to, we have to make sure it's the right phone, the right device. And you have the option either to get an SMS or a voice validation. We use asterisk for that today. We have a number of proprietary Java and PHP parts, and those are the, uh, the uh, uh, user management, you know, counts and all that. Uh, we both have, of course, you use sign up, like for Plingham, you sign up for our services, free service, you download and you sign up. But we also have a uh, connection for when you have the, the client has their own uh, user base with their own accounts, so we validate through that instead. Uh, and also reporting. Reporting, well, what's that? Well, it's not just statistics, it's billing, of course. We're talking, this is voice over IP and M, it's basically telephony, isn't it? Uh, so you end up with billing uh, systems, and that is a proprietary system today, uh, which is built from Enterprise Java with a fair amount of PHP sprinkled around there for for various bits and bobs. And then we have a number of PHP parts, actually, uh, for various supporting services and interconnection with other services. So we have for the push part, where we send messages through Apple's uh, and um, Google's push systems. We have the address book in connectivity. We have for SMSs sending out these validation SMSs. Voice validation, well, it actually connects to the asterisk that way and social integration, which we currently have. You can use the I if a friend of yours have a Facebook ID uh, and using this service, you can call him using the Facebook ID rather than uh, his phone number or something like that. And we use for most of our backend storage, data storage, it's MySQL. And currently it's, it's a mix. Uh, this is partially what has been, so it's a hot standby solution. And we use Couchbase for speed layer to have quick access to data, uh, so uh, uh, having it at an arm's length. <coughs> so um, um, uh, this is about Erlang, right? I haven't mentioned any Erlang. And there wasn't any Erlang until the IM arrived, because originally there weren't any IM in Plingham, which is voice over IP. <coughs> but a quite natural choice when st setting up uh, an IM is to use EJBD. And in fact, we used uh, uh, a Erlang Solutions uh, f supported EJBD fork called Mongoose. And originally, in fact, all development for this was uh, performed by Erlang Solutions uh, for SARC before I joined. So it's basically uh, a Mongoose. But we have added uh, that we also use some extensions like the uh, delivery receipt, which we need, we need to know that delivery has been made. But we also have a number of proprietary extensions, such as call control. Um, uh, we needed to add, because we couldn't be, I mentioned SIP online all the time, we couldn't be SIP online, it simply did not work. So. It, it the, the part that was the easiest to add something like that was, in fact, XMPP server. 
Uh, so the XMP server became responsible if the other party is not online to make sure we get an external push when someone is calling you. So that was implemented in that. Uh, we also have the social network integration. All that is built, of course, in, in the, um, as an extension, in fact, in the uh, EGWD server. Uh, and we made some changes since we're talking mobile devices and data traffic can be something that's really expensive in many places, so we want to reduce, minimize, especially since you get much more reconnects than you normally do uh, with an EGBD, well, well, an XMP client. Typically, you're online, right? But with a mobile phone, you, you go from 3G to 2G, you lose your connection. You have to reconnect again, or you go onto your Wi-Fi, or you're going to radio shadow for a while, or something like that happens. So it's very frequent that you have to reconnect, so we want to limit the amount of traffic this, that is uh, sent. So, for example, with the chat rooms, if you join a multi-user chat room, we can see you always online. That's, that's the way it's dealt with. So you don't have to, the client don't have to join all of them again when the, you come online. And since we do archival, if you send to someone, they will get it because it's archived for them. So the next time they come online, that those, will be those messages will be retrieved by the client. Uh, we also use plain authentication because we only, we only allow TLS uh, connections anyway. So it's HTTPS uh, that we're running. So MD5 uh, checksums don't really add that much. And we have uh, a customized message archiving then, of course, because we have to customize things a bit here to make it working. And there's a few other bits and bobs just, just to uh, reduce the amount of traffic we send back and forth doing this. So that was the original. Now we're moving into what we partially have done and what we are in the process of doing where we want to go. We're going to keep open SIPs. But all the PHP is going, we're replacing it by Lua uh, uh, because all the people responsible for these parts, that is m me and, and uh, our system guy, DevOp, call him what you want, uh, prefer Lua. Uh, it's, uh, it's an elegant language. Uh, something I can't really say about PHP. Good intentions, but... Uh. So... SIP signaling still stays in the open SIP stacks, but CDR generation and call control are actually transferred to a free switch layer, which we have added. So we are in the process of transferring. And there we have Lua scripts, but for more complicated call control, we're probably going to use the uh, Mod Erlang uh, uh, part of free switch, where you can actually implement that in Erlang. Uh, asterisk is going to go because we're going very probably because free switch can do that as well. It's nothing against uh, asterisk. It's just that if we're using free switch, we might as well use the voice validation support there instead. And the proprietary Java and PHP, well, it's probably going to stay for a f for a foreseeable future, but we actually want to uh, use open source uh, stuff for those parts, for the CRM and for, for the reporting. Uh, the reason is we don't see any leverage in, uh, in supporting that ourselves and there are good open source alternatives. That's the, that's the reason for that. And <coughs> for all these small bits and bobs services around there, well, I said that I, you may have realized that I don't love PHP. Uh, I do love Erlang, though. So, so and, and they are really uh, doing things. They have normally are doing fairly simple things, but they have to do many of them at the same time. It has to be reliable. Um, yeah, Erlang. Erlang will do. Uh, so we're probably going to t start migrating them uh, on a you know, need-to-change basis. When there's any real need for change, we will actually uh, transfer these to Erlang. Uh, one of the things is that PHP is actually quite expensive to maintain. 
the, the tendency to always want to please you is very makes it very hard to figure out the root causes of of errors because uh, uh, yeah you you're calling a method that doesn't exist but you still get a response that looks absolutely perfectly valid because you wanted a value I give you value but you know I would rather had a crash we are also going to add the attachments uh, support isn't there altogether yet and that will actually be implemented in Erlang on the server side uh, the MySQL is staying but we're going to and we already started so for some of the new parts, we already switched over from having a hot standby solution to the Percone Extra DB clustering, uh, which has very nice features and is has a proven track record. Uh, and the most important part is that the hot standby solution we've seen, uh, we haven't actually experienced, but we've seen other experience that when you actually end up with a split brain for those because you do a uh, it ends badly when they try to get back online, get things sy synchronized. And Couchbase, well, that works very well, so we, we don't see any reasons to change that at the mo this, this time. And the stack, well, we're going to add uh, a lot of extensions. So, for example, there's stream management, uh, which is an extension. What's that? Well, actually, that is so that when you lose the connectivity with the Ubiti server, you don't you don't close the session immediately. There's a notion of you have a time to reconnect, so you don't have to go through all the normal negotiations you do with the server about uh, availability of services and whatnot. So that is going to be added. <coughs> There's also an extension for Quick Start, which we like. We, we like getting our clients in there quickly in the service. Oh, and uh, yeah, yeah, lots of other things. Uh, um, perhaps, well, um, having worked a long time with Erlang, um, uh, getting your hands on an old, I have to say, Erlang product, it, it, you, you get this um, desire to improve bits, bits and things. But we'll see how far we get with that. Hopefully, we manage to to push some of it upstream as well. Although mm, it's going to be interesting, since we have so many so many of our own additions that no one else would really be interested in. So, questions. Thank you very much. Yes, questions. Thank you for the presentation. Um, mm. I have a question about the address book uh, management. Yeah. So does your your client usually upload the address book to the servers to do the work, or you? Uh, initially, when you install the application, the address book will be uploaded to uh, the um, to our system. So we will keep it in our system as long as the account is active. Of course, we we don't keep your information no, otherwise. But, uh, uh, but then, uh, so. Uh, I, I, if if someone comes online, we, we try to look up, is this one in any address book we know? Well, then, uh, no, come on. Uh, if um, someone registers with us, we look. If, if you're already there, then we'll actually push that information out to the clients of those, of your friends, basically, that already have the application. But after that, we don't keep sending the entire address book back and forth, no. I mean, uh, is this a lot of uh, data to go through to, uh, to uh, check? It's currently it's one of the bigger uh, data sources. Yes, uh, the uh, data uh, pieces of data we have. Archiving is going to be quite big eventually, and also attachments will also uh, grow. But that is one of the biggest parts we have today. Still not huge. You see, we used to got two million users, right? No, another question is, uh, where do you store offline messages? Or you don't have them? Uh, well, we have archival. So we archive everything. So we don't have the mod on offline. So what the, what the client does when it comes online, and this is a slight extend, uh, variation from the, the original extension uh, for, for, for um, archival, is that we send in the query to an IQ to the server, which responds with all private message, 
uh, conversations, all multi-user conversations, which you have new messages in, and then those are retrieved. Uh, pa paginated, of course, to, to the client. Uh, last question, just yeah. about the scale. How, how many nodes do you have the each of the uh, Depends on how you count. I mean, we have, we have of course, uh, we have um, three uh, XMPP servers at the moment. W we have uh, three database, uh, Pocona databases. We still have two other My MySQL databases used by parts of the system and so on, but this will grow. And also, th then we have the, the cluster in South Africa. So we also have, we tend to do at least three of everything. So we have uh, a bit of fault tolerance. I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night because one server goes down, right? When two goes down, then I'd better wake up. So that's the thing. Uh, do you do any kind of fraud detection for uh, PSDN calls? Um, we have various blacklists, for example. So people trying to phone um, uh, premium numbers. So those are blacklisted. Uh, and there are also, um, uh, we try to see if you try, uh, you if you try to register too many ap uh, the applications too many times and so on. There have been, for example, in uh, schemes earlier where you got a, a um, uh, amount of money to phone, well, points to phone, phone for, wh which is money really, um, uh, when you sign up. And then people will try to sign up again and again and again. So we d do have some of it, but I wouldn't say it, it's not a m major part yet, but it will probably grow, I would say. Uh, we have been occasionally fooled in the past, but we won't be fooled that gain way again. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, more questions? Uh, speaking as someone who knows absolutely nothing about instance messaging, um, what are the interoperability issues across vendors? Do they across vendors? Yeah, I mean, could you, for instance, connect to Skype or some random other one that implements this? Oh, right. You mean other services? One could potentially do that, of course. Uh, but at the moment, we have enough problems getting our heads around if we were to have different ven uh, different resellers or our resellers sending in between and making that understandable to, to the user in a good way. You, and can't, you can't even do that. Well, we can, but we don't want to because we can't. We we haven't figured out how to make it a, a good experience for the user so that you will understand what is going on because otherwise say that you have downloaded two of our, our, our uh, um, uh, we, we're figuring this and we tried it, uh, uh, sort of trying out, and you download two of our applications. I have one. And what we then had was that I preferred to call the one that you had if it was the same. Otherwise, it connected to the other one. So you have the one I have, so I phone you. Fine. Everything's fine. Then you deinstall that one, right? So you don't have it anymore. We can't. There's no way we get informed of that. There's no support in Android or or the iOS. There's support. There's nothing for that. So you just deinstall it, and I phone you. But our preferences are saying that I should use the same app for you, but it doesn't exist anymore. But you have an app. But all the times you phone, you phone using that one to me. And then we, you know, you phone up me with a regular phone, cursing me because I didn't call you. And I said I tried to call, but you weren't online ever. And it's, it's very confusing. So then you have to somehow present what kind of applications you're using. It. And that is usability thing, mostly. That uh, that is complicated. Okay. As for other vendors, the, the question you actually asked, like Skype. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if 
Or would they allow us? That's the first question. And the second uh, is uh, uh, we want to. We want them to use our applications, right? Uh, the comment was that uh, uh, we want telephony generally. Y yes and no. But then again, this isn't general telephony at the end of the day. It's more about applications and providing quite often used an added user experience to some application that isn't primarily about voice over IP. And then it becomes much more of a moot point. Okay, then I think we are Done. So uh, one more thanks to Henry uh, for his presentation and don't forget to vote. <laughs>